thoughts on the HD0 uh, AIO, AIO being SPI. So HD0 has this new all-in-one flight controller with HD0 VTX on board and Express Alerts receiver and the Express Alerts receiver is SPI, not UART-based. And I think that sucks. That sucks. Uh, because uh, SPI receivers need to just go die. So UART-based receivers are the way to be. Um, I'm sure there's a good reason they made it SPI-based, uh, but uh, I'm disappointed that that's the case. Because it means you can't update Express LRS except by flashing a new version of Betaflight. And that's a pain in the ass to tie the Express LRS release schedule to the Betaflight release schedule. In addition, um, you don't get access to all of the packet rates. In addition, you don't get Wi-Fi updating or Wi-Fi configuration. There's a whole bunch of ways that SPI receivers are inferior to UART-based Express LRS receivers. And I thought the industry was moving away from SPI receivers because they realized that that little dalliance was a big mistake. And uh, now for uh, HD0 to have done this, I assume that there's a good reason why they did it and they couldn't have done it any other way, but I'm disappointed. I don't right, think it so, fits. Yeah, that's that's what I'm wondering. Because you need a new, you need another uh, ESP32 chip if you're going to do a UART-based one, right? Yes. Yeah. So and they just no way to do it. So if fine. you look at the board, there's literally no... There's I believe it. No I yeah. believe it. So let's look at the board. Well, as long as we're talking. So here's the here's the board. And you can see there's just literally nowhere to put it, except if you resize the board somehow to get another chip on there. Here's the other side of the board, right? There's this is a feat of engineering that they got as much on here as they did. It's extraordinary. Got some FETs, we got all kinds yeah, of shit. Bright. Bryce says that board is 14 layers. Wow. That's a lot of layers. I mean, this is really, I mean, when you say it's a feat of engineering, this is really a feat of engineering. Yeah, it's incredible. So we live with an SPI-based receiver. It's unfortunate, uh, but it is what it is. 14 layers. Sheesh. That's, a, that's really something. So the question is, what version of Betaflight does it have on it? Well, what version of Express Alerts does it have on it? I actually have that flight control uh, or in a uh, in uh, in a whoop, but I, I don't know how you would know what version of ELRS it is because it's just baked into Betaflight. Anyway, um, there you go. I mean, if it's three point oh. Like, the, what's the last version of Betaflight that had SPI ELRS support? Um, if it's ELRS 3.0, that's a shame, because there's new shit in 3.3, 3.4, 3.5 that we're missing out on. But, you know, mm, you're going to do It's 3.0. The SPI has not been updated since they did 3.0. Nobody's oh, that's, maintaining that's, SPI. That's depressing. That's depressing. Like, and I understand, I, like, I don't want to be too hard. I don't want to be... I, I don't want to... Like, uh, they accomplished a lot. It's an amazing feat of accomplishment that you've got this all-in-one board that weighs what it does, that has HD0 on board. That's amazing. But then, like, there's this little sour spot where you're like, yeah, oh, man. So, what are you going to do? There is no disadvantage to SPI receivers, says 661FPV. I disagree. I disagree. Uh, SPI receivers... They don't support all of the packet rates. They don't support F1000, for example. Oh, do you need F1000? I don't. But, like, as a racer, I'd like the lowest latency possible. No, can't have, can't have the FLRC rates. Okay, well, it's all right. I'll get away. It's fine. I'll go with 500. Um, uh, you don't have the ability to do Wi-Fi configuration. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass. And if I want a new version, if I um, want a new version of Express Alerts because it's got some feature that I want, I can't have it. So, uh, Captain Bry says, I'm maintaining it. I'm maintaining it. You would be, Captain Bry. What are your thoughts on cheap Amazon builds under $200? I don't know. Um... What, which I need a specific example, right? Um, 
There's an AliExpress 7-inch build under $200, and it's pretty crappy, but it's probably worth $200. You know what I mean? So inexpensive. Generally, the Amazon builds are really questionable in terms of their quality. Like, if I search for... Let's see what we can find. Uh, is it ARF is the keyword, almost ready to fly. I'm trying to find one of these kits. Oh my God, don't buy this. Oh my God, run far, far away from this. Q went out DIY. Oh my God, flame wheel. Like, I'm not even sure. Five inch FPV drone kit, $165. Wow. Oh, this is the wrong account. Hang on, switch accounts. There we go. What the frick? Oh, it's a TMMRC. Uh, oh, I do know this one. That's not the Johnny 5, is it? Darwin 240, Johnny 5. That's not the Darwin 2. It's not a Darwin or it's a TMMRC. Wow, that is a hell of a price. $169. I mean, that's tempting to buy just to see if it sucks. It might, I mean, it probably sucks, but it might be worth, what the frick, $109? For real? For real? That's really, imp that's really impressive that you can deliver anything at that price. It has to be trash, right? Uh, F411 flight controller. That's fine. That's what I would expect. 2004 motors. The specs are okay. Where'd they cut the corners? It's got to be garbage. Let's look at the ratings. Dead on arrival. USB didn't work. Couldn't connect to beta flight. Do not buy. No flight stack in your drone. Yeah, very sketchy. Is double-sided tape still the preferred way to mount a VTX, like the HD0 Freestyle V2? Um, it's my preference, for sure. Uh, I like to use a type of tape called Alien Tape. It is, hands down, the best... Hands down, the best double-sided tape. It's a little thick for some applications, but... It sticks and it does not let go. It is really, really strong. Um, so uh, it will hold on to your even better than VHB tape. It's like VHB tape extreme. Uh, so you can get it out of Amazon. You get a lot of places, um, and it's pretty. It's pretty incredible. Uh, there are some VTXs that I would consider using screws to mount, like the O3 or the uh, Walksnail VTXs. Some of them have lug mounts or screw hole mounts. And in some cases, you might think, oh, well, that's going to be more secure than uh, double-sided tape. In some cases, it will be. Sometimes you want a little bit of give that the double-sided tape has. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would say double-sided tape is my default.